Just when SpaceX thought it had the upper hand in reusable rocketry, China drops a jaw-dropping move that has stunned the global space community. And yes, even Elon Musk is watching. A flawless escape test. A massive methane-powered rocket. Coordinated satellite maneuvers in orbit. Is China not just catching up, but passing SpaceX in key areas? In today's TechMap episode, we're breaking down exactly what China just pulled off, why it's such a game changer, and what it means for the future of the moon race. Buckle up because this one's big. At exactly 12.30 a.m. Eastern on June 17th, deep in the Gobi Desert at the Juquan Satellite Launch Center, China pulled off a high-stakes spaceflight test and nailed it. The China Manned Space Engineering Office, CMSEO, successfully conducted a dramatic pad abort test, also known as a zero-altitude escape test. The spotlight? Mengzhou, China's next-gen crewed spacecraft, is built not just to reach low Earth orbit, but to one day take astronauts all the way to the moon. So what's a pad abort test, and why does it matter? It's essentially a last-chance life-saving maneuver. If something goes wrong on the launch pad, astronauts need a way to escape fast and safely. This test showed that Mengzhou can do just that. It's a crucial building block for China's ambitious goal, landing astronauts on the moon by 2030. Here's what the test proved. Mengzhou's emergency system can blast the spacecraft off the ground in a split second, detach the return capsule from the escape tower, and deploy its parachutes flawlessly. The capsule then floated back down to the desert, cushioned by an airbag system, and landed exactly where it was supposed to. Everything worked like clockwork, proving the system can whisk astronauts away from danger and bring them safely home. Mengzhou also marks a major shift in safety design. Unlike China's older Shenzhou spacecraft, which relied on rockets for emergency thrust, Mengzhou takes full responsibility for its own safety systems. From abort control to crew protection, it's a self-contained guardian. Officials said the test verified a long list of critical systems. The initiation of the escape sequence, separation of components, trajectory control, and the life support systems on board, you name it. And it wasn't just a feel-good demo. Engineers gathered real-world flight data to confirm that the spacecraft behaves just like the simulations predicted. Bottom line, it wasn't just a test, it was a bold step forward. China is not just catching up in the space game, it's laying the groundwork to lead the next era of lunar exploration. This moment is being hailed as a giant leap for China's lunar dreams. It's more than a test, it's a clear signal that China is serious about going head-to-head -head with the United States in the next great space race. And it's not stopping here. Development is moving full speed ahead on other key pieces of the moon mission, like the powerful Long March 10 rocket and the Lanyu lunar lander. More tests are on the way. The recent test clearly highlights a major strength of China's space program. Step by step, China is making impressive progress, showing not only its resolve to catch up with the world's leading spacefaring nations, but possibly even surpass them. The Mengzhou, or Dream Vessel, marks a huge advancement over the current Shenzhou spacecraft. With a modular design, it's being developed in two distinct versions, one for low Earth orbit, LEO, and another tailored for crewed lunar missions. The partially reusable LEO variant can carry up to seven astronauts to the Tiangong space station, or fewer crew members alongside 500 kilograms of cargo. Meanwhile, the lunar version, weighing up to 26 tons, will transport three astronauts into lunar orbit, where it will dock with a separately launched lunar lander. As said, what makes Mengzhou stand out is its full autonomy when it comes to abort control and crew safety. It's designed to be the workhorse of China's future space station operations and crewed missions to the moon. But Mengzhou isn't the only project pushing boundaries. China's space program also includes the development of the Long March 10 rocket and the Lanyu lunar lander. Both are advancing steadily and remain on track for further testing. The Long March 10, powered by YF-100K kerosene liquid oxygen engines, features three five-meter-wide core stages. It builds on the legacy of the Long March 5, 
with new launch facilities currently being constructed at Wenchang on Hainan Island. As the United States advances its in-orbit refueling technologies, China is also making strides. The country has conducted docking maneuvers between its Shijian-21 and Shijian-25 satellites in geostationary orbit. This is part of a broader effort to build refueling and maintenance capabilities in space, essential steps for future long-duration lunar missions. Shijian-21 was launched back in October 2021, with Shijian-25 joining it in orbit in January 2025. At first, they were positioned about 2 degrees apart in longitude, which translates to roughly 1,500 kilometers of separation in geostationary orbit. Shijian-21 had already made headlines when it docked with the inactive Beidou 2G2 navigation satellite and successfully towed it to a graveyard orbit, a special zone where defunct satellites are parked out of the way. After completing that mission, it seemed to go quiet possibly because it had run low on fuel. But in a surprising twist, Shijian-21 recently fired up its thrusters again and began maneuvering toward Shijian-25. Simultaneously, Shijian-25 also adjusted its path, and the two began a coordinated orbital dance, carefully syncing up in what's known as a phased orbit to save fuel during the rendezvous. As of about a week ago, the two were expected to meet around June 11. While there hasn't been any official word on the outcome yet, the event may have been closely watched by U.S. surveillance satellites, USA-270 and USA-271. These are part of the Geosynchronous Space Situational Awareness Program, GSSAP, which keeps a close eye on activity in that part of space. Once the docking occurs, Shijian-25 is expected to showcase some cutting-edge tech, like transferring fuel and providing life extension support to other spacecraft. These advances could be game-changers, making space missions more sustainable by cutting costs, reducing the need for frequent satellite replacements, and helping to curb the growth of orbital debris. Still, China's program isn't without its drawbacks. One notable gap lies in its limited history of escape system testing. The recent Mengzhou pad abort test is only the second in China's history. The first was in 1998 with the Shenzhou spacecraft. This long interval suggests that China may not yet have conducted as many safety validation tests as other leading space powers. That said, the latest success underscores the growing maturity of their capabilities. When comparing China to the United States, it's also clear that America still leads in several critical areas. While China is catching up fast, the U.S. maintains a head start in key aspects of lunar exploration, at least for now. Let's break down a striking example of the innovation gap in space tech. While China has only recently begun developing an independent launch abort system for its Mengzhou spacecraft, SpaceX was already integrating a fully functional system into Crew Dragon over a decade ago. Now, what makes Crew Dragon's abort system so impressive? It's powered by eight Super Draco engines, embedded right into the capsule's side walls. Each one pumps out a staggering 71 kilonewtons, or about 16,000 pounds, of thrust. These engines aren't just for show. They allow for several critical abort modes, from a pad abort before liftoff, to an in-flight abort during ascent, and even a late-stage abort to reach a lower orbit safely if needed. This isn't just engineering, it's foresight. It's a clear reminder that the U.S. and companies like SpaceX have consistently pushed the boundaries of space innovation far ahead of the curve. While China is catching up fast, there's no denying that in many ways they're still playing catch-up in a race the U.S. started running years ago. So, how about you? Do you think that at the current rate of progress, China can catch up with the United States in the space race? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Anyway, if you love this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Check out our other videos on Starship, Artemis, and more. And let's keep exploring the cosmos together.
Here's another fascinating update on China's fast-moving space program. Chinese private space startup Landspace achieved a major milestone on June 20th with a successful static fire test as it works toward the first orbital launch of its Zhukai 3 rocket. At exactly midnight Eastern, all nine engines of the Zhukai 3's stainless steel first stage roared to life at Launch Pad 2 in the Dongfeng Commercial Space Innovation Test Zone at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China. The rocket's self-developed Tianke 12A engines, methane liquid oxygen powered, ignited one after the other and burned for 45 seconds. The test included gimbal control trials and wrapped up with a smooth shutdown as planned. Altogether, the engines generated a whopping 7,542 kilonewtons of thrust. Landspace called the test a major step forward, laying critical groundwork not just for the debut flight of Zhukai 3, but also for China's broader ambitions in reusable launch vehicle technology. This multi-engine firing brings China one step closer to mastering reusability, a key focus for future spaceflight. But major challenges still remain, like achieving orbit, ensuring safe recovery, and proving the rocket can fly again. Originally, the first orbital attempt for Zhukai 3 was scheduled for the third quarter of this year and is expected to carry a prototype of the reusable Haolong cargo spacecraft. This vehicle was developed by the Chengdu Aircraft Design Institute under AVIC and is part of a larger push for affordable cargo transport to the Tiangong Space Station. However, Landspace didn't provide an updated launch date in its latest statement. In a related achievement, Landspace completed a 10-kilometer suborbital flight and landing test with a prototype first stage back in September 2024. The company has set its sights on starting full recovery operations by 2026. Friday's static fire used a flight-ready first stage identical to the one intended for the rocket's inaugural mission. The test covered all aspects of launch readiness, propellant loading, tank pressurization, staged ignition, steady thrust performance, and a clean shutdown. According to Landspace, Zhukai 3 stands about 66 meters tall and weighs roughly 570 metric tons at liftoff. That's about 10 meters shorter than previous estimates, indicating that early launches might come with a reduced payload capacity. Eventually, the two-stage, 4.5-meter diameter Zhukai 3 is expected to weigh around 660 tons at launch, powered by upgraded Tianke 12B engines. When flying expendably, it could deliver up to 21,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. If the first stage is recovered downrange, payload capacity drops slightly to 18,300 kilograms and to 12,500 kilograms if returning to the launch site. This test follows a similar milestone achieved by CAS Space with its Kinetica 2 rocket, which is also preparing for a debut flight in the near future carrying its own prototype cargo spacecraft. 